Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Yes. 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 Okay. Why am I having, I have a line of this thing across my screen, which normally isn't there. So that's why I'm not sure. Okay, so we're gonna go, um, okay, before I even get there, remember we said that, um, Okay, I'm not going to ask that right now because we went over that. Uh... Okay. So I think this is the last slide we did last time. Uh, we said that the pituitary gland, also referred to as hypophysis, is referred to as the master gland of the body. This is located at the base of the brain behind the optic nerve. Uh, and this controls the action of the entire endocrine system through the hormones that it produces. And you have the anterior and the posterior pituitary. And just as a just as a, a a reference, when we were doing the reproductive system, we talked about the gonadotropic hormones. You anybody remember what those are? The major, let's say, the major gonadotropic hormones. Minimizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone yeah follicle stimulating hormone and i didn't hear the other one glutamizing hormone yes now and remember we where were the where did we say those two hormones were secreted is it the liver no both, both of those hormones are secreted in the anterior pituitary. So a lot of times when we're talking about hormones, you're going to see they're going to come from either one of these, the anterior or posterior. I mean, the hormones come from lots of different places, but I just wanted to point out the pituitary gland in particular because it is, you know, the master gland. A lot, most, the majority of the hormones that affect different parts of the body are secreted in the pituitary gland. Now, we said that it has two parts, the anterior and the posterior. So now we're going to take each one and just briefly give some examples of hormones that are secreted there. So the anterior pituitary, now, this one is also referred to as the adenohypophysis. Remember we said that the, the whole gland, the whole pituitary gland is the, is the hypophysis. And the anterior pituitary is, the, is referred to as adenohypophysis. It's just another name for the anterior pituitary. And this secretes hormones that regulate the secretion of hormones from other endocrine glands. So what, it is, what that means is that in the anterior pituitary, there are some stimulating hormones that are secreted there. And they are referred to as stimulating hormones because those hormones, once they are secreted, they go to other glands and stimulate them to secrete hormones. And everybody got that? Everybody understood what it means when, I, when it says that they regulate the sec they secrete hormones that regulate the secretion of other hormones from other endocrine glands. Yes, let, no. Okay, so let me give you this example. So the, the anterior pituitary, it secretes the thyroid stimulating hormone. Now this, thyro this thyroid stimulating hormone then goes to the thyroid gland and stimulate the thyroid gland to secrete hormones. So that's what it means when it says it secretes hormones that goes to other endocrine glands and stimulate those glands to secrete other hormones. So th that's what that is saying. It also secretes adrenocorticotropic hormone, and this then goes the adrenal cortex and stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete other hormones. So all these are stimulating, are referred to as stimulating hormones. 
then another example of hormones that are secreted in the anterior pituitary are the gonadotropic hormones, which we just talked about. And then this then goes to the reproductive system and different sex glands to stimulate them to do some action. You also have growth hormone, which stimulates growth of the animal. So these are some examples now. In the text, it has lots of different hormones that are listed there, but I point out like the, the ones that I think you guys would be fam more familiar with, so it's easier to remember. <clears throat> So these are examples of some of the hormones that are secreted in the anterior pituitary. <laughs> the amount of hormone that is produced in the anterior pituitary depends on the level of activity of the target gland. You remember the positive and negative feedback that we had talked about is kind of similar to that. So the amount of hormone that the anterior pituitary gland will secrete is going to depend on how much the target gland needs. If say there's it, whatever the situation is and it needs a lot of a particular hormone from that target gland, then more of the of hormones coming from the anterior pituitary will be secreted. So the, the amount and level of hormone secreted depends on the need of each of the gland that it's going to have some effect on. So the more that is produced, the greater will be the, will be the effect, which would be obvious. Now, you have the next part of the pituitary gland is the posterior pituitary. And another name for the posterior pituitary is neurohypophysis. So the entire pituitary gland is referred to, it is also called the hypophysis. Then the two parts it's separated in the anterior pituitary, which is the adenohypophysis, just another name for it. And then now the posterior pituitary, which is referred to as the neurohypophysis, which is, as I say, it's just another name for it. Now, these are just two hormones, an example of two hormones that are secreted in the posterior pituitary, vasotocin and mesotocin. These are produced in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior lobe. Both function in uterine contraction. So you will, although, the, okay, let me change that. You guys know that the pituitary is situated close to where the hypothalamus is at the hypothalamus is at the base of the brain. So these two hormones, although they are produced in the hypothalamus, they are stored in the posterior pituitary gland until it's ready for to um, do its function. And they are they both of these hormones function in uterine contraction. So it has to it have some effect on the uterus. Now let's talk about the hypothalamus, which is another endocrine gland as well. We had, later on, when you guys progress to higher level classes, you learn a lot about the hypothalamus, but one of its function is the secretion of hormones. So it is also an endocrine gland as well as all the other functions that it performs. Now the hypothalamus is the portion of the brain that produces releasing factors or hormones that regulates the release of hormones from the anterior pituitary. Okay, you guys are gonna see how complicated this is, our biological system is. There are, there are hormones that are produced in the hypothalamus. Those hormones are released into the blood and enter the anterior pituitary, which stimulates it to produce hormones. The hormones in the anterior pituitary then travels through the blood to different organs in the body to secrete hormones to have their functions where, where it's needed. So you can see how complicated the system is, but that's how our body continuously is working like that, just as it, it does in the chickens or in any other animals. The hypothalamus also produces oxytocin, which plays a role in the release of the yolk from the ovary. Anybody? Can tell me another function of oxytocin not related to, to chickens? 
not very important here, but just to see, just to see if you guys are familiar with that particular hormone. It's important in, in humans and other farm animals, but not necessarily in, for that other function. But in chickens, it is a role in the release of the yolk from the ovary. Okay. Um, the quantity of the releasing hormones depends on day length. Day length, remember how we say that light effect have effect on, on all of these glands in how they function and secrete hormones. It has to do with the, the amount of light uh, that they are exposed to. And I said, if there's not enough day length, Artificial light can be used. If you remember when we did the uh, reproductive system, we talked about the importance of um, day length. If, if, if it's shorter days, like in the fall, winter time, then you provide extra art, um, time um, and extra artificial light in the housing that you're keeping the birds to make sure they are exposed to enough light so that they can produce the hormones from these glands. Any questions? Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the thyroid gland. There are two pairs located on either side of the neck and they are embedded in fatty tissue. Now, I don't know if you guys eat chicken, most of you, and you know that uh, I don't know how many of you eat the neck of the chicken because most times people will buy just the chicken parts and not necessarily the whole chicken that comes with the neck attached. Um, you will not see the, because they clean up the chicken, you will not see the thyroid gland on either side of the chicken. But uh, my student, my graduate students, when they're doing their research and they have to collect, they actually have to go in and collect all these glands. Um, to find the thyroid glands, when they slaughter the chicken, they have to make sure they do not damage the neck of the, the chicken because underneath the skin, embedded in all the fat under the skin and, and close to the, the muscle, the thyroid glands are embedded in that fatty tissue. And you have to actually remove the fat to find the, the all and the thyroid gland it's several lobes there are there are little lobes that are attached um under the fatty tissue and the, those glands are very important to produce these um thyroid hormones and the two important ones are thyroxine this helps to regulate heat production carbohydrate metabolism and promotes high blood pressure, sorry, high blood sugar levels and promotes growth. So this, this thyroxin is very important. And they just, ref, um, not, they just use T4 to refer to thyroxin. The other one is, is, is triiodothyronine or T3. And this, involve, this is involved in the development of skin and feathers and may be involved in the molting process. Now, if depending, I, I don't know what questions I'll ask, but if I ask you about thyroid hormones, I do not want you to put T4 and T3, and I'm telling you that now, because students I try to remember the easy thing, and T3, T4. Then I ask you, what is T4 or T3? And you don't know. You need to know the name of the hormone that is secreted. Just like I tell you not to use acronyms because students tend to memorize acronyms and have no idea what the acronyms mean. To me, that is not actually learning the information. We use the acronyms once you know exactly what it is and in certain situations where, you know, it's understood what they are and there's no need to explain it. But for student learning, you have to learn the name of the hormone. So the Two thyroid hormones that we talk about here is thyroxine and triiodothyronine. Just practice when you're studying, practice the spell and to you know, know what these hormones are. So everybody know the two hormones secreted by the thyroid gland and what their functions are? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have, I have one question about T3. Mm -hmm. um, is it still being looked into about what T3 does for molting exactly? Because it says may be involved, but what to what extent is it involved in the molting process? Well, I've not seen in all the years I'm doing it, they have not said exactly. But as you know, that uh, research is a continuous thing, right? That's mm -hmm. why we're all involved in research right now. So I've not seen any, like a definitive statement to say, yes, it does. But it just says that it may be involved. That means at some point you'll see more definitive statements come out. But that, that's what it is. But the major, um, one of the major function is its involvement in the development of skin and feathers. Okay. Now we go to another gland, the parathyroid gland. Now, remember we say that the thyroid gland is located on either side of the neck of the chicken. And these are little lobes on either side that you'll find. And the lobes are actually attached to each other. Now, at the bottom or the base of the thyroid gland, is where you find the parathyroid gland. So you'll see the lobes of the thyroid and then right below, that's where you'll see the parathyroid gland. So this, it's on the, the base of the neck, just like the thyroid gland. That's why it says there are two pairs located at the base of the neck closely associated with the thyroids. Because when we go in to collect the thyroid gland, we have to make sure if we just want to do a, a report on thyroid gland. We have to make sure we know where the thyroid gland ends and the parathyroid gland begins. So when these students are doing their research, they, they have to actually know this information and know what where to collect, when to stop collecting the thyroid and when the parathyroid starts. So they really have to know this so that they do not, and they almost look alike. So they have to know their information to be able to do that. Now, the parathyroid gland secretes parathormone. This should be easy to remember. It's called parathormone or the parathyroid hormone. And this regulates calcium deposition and mobilization from bones. Therefore, it makes this hormone important in eggshell formation because you know that, you remember when we're giving an example, we say that if calcium, for, you know that calcium is required for eggshell formation. You guys know that. So if say there's a, a, a deficiency of calcium, this hormone then this hormone then triggers this, this gland to secrete this hormone, which is then gonna go. You remember when we were learning about uh, medullary bones? coracoids, pneumatic bones, and we said one of them mobilize, to mobilize calcium. No, one of them provides the like extra calcium that is needed if there's a deficiency of calcium. So this hormone is what would trigger the release of the, that extra calcium that is needed. So it mobilizes calcium from these bones so that it can um, uh, release enough calcium for eggshell formation in this case. So that's what the parathormone does, or one, fun one function of the parathormone. Another gland, another endocrine gland is the ultimal bronchial body. And this is located behind the parathyroid gland. It produces calcitonin, which works to reduce calcium levels in the blood. Now, look at these two glands here. One of them, I said that if there's a deficiency in calcium, it mobilizes, it mobilizes calcium from bones to do what it needs to do. Now, in this one, if there is too much calcium in the blood, because there can be too much calcium, and it can lead to you know, 
uh, other issues which uh, can cause um, calciferous buildup on the on eggshells because they were just too much. This ultima bronchial body secretes calcitonin, which is going to reduce the level of calcium in the blood if there is too much being secreted. So they kind of have like the opposite um, activity. So everything in your body, everything that is happening is dependent on these glands and the hormones that they secrete. Even things that you wouldn't think are involved, um, involve hormones, they do involve, involve hormones coming from these different glands. Okay, any questions so far? As I say, um, these are, don't think when we're talking about the endocrine system here, this is just a brief introduction to it. Um, the endocrine system is an entire course by itself. And when you study that, you get you dig deeper into um, how many hormones are produced by these glands and all the different functions of them. So don't want you to the idea that, for example, we talk about, say, the parathyroid gland, for example, and we say it secretes parathyroid hormone and it does this, but there are other things that happen there in all of these glands that we are talking about. Okay. Another endocrine gland is the islets of longer hands. And this is located in the pancreas. Now, you guys know where the pancreas is, right? Where is the pancreas located? We talked about that in the top. In between the uh, small intestine, like wrap, like where the coil is or where it coils up, it's in between it. What, what part of this? Small yeah. intestine is that? What is that part called? The duodenum, yes. So remember, the, the small intestines has three, well, kind of three different parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. So the pancreas is located, when that, remember the duodenum is like a loop, and the pancreas is located within that loop. Now, the pancreas, just, is just to uh, get your mind back to there to see where the pancreas is located. Now, the islets of Langerhans are located in the pancreas. So now you know where it is. The islets of Langerhans is within that, in the pancreas. And it secretes insulin that regulates sugar metabolism. Therefore, it controls the blood sugar level. So you hear about people with diabetes and all that, and they, they uh, most times it's because they are not producing enough insulin, so they have to get insulin shots, I guess, depending on the type of diabetes they have. So insulin is secreted from the islets of longer hands that is located within the pancreas, and the insulin regulates sugar metabolism, therefore controls blood sugar level. It also secretes glucagon, so glucagon is also secreted in the pan, in the islets of longer hands, and it increases blood sugar level and affects fatty acid levels. Now, it says it secretes insulin to regulate sugar metabolism, but it also secretes glucagon, which increases blood sugar level, because you know that there are people who their uh, blood sugar level gets so low that they can pass out, right? So it just depends on how your body, how your body is sensing the is what is going on because your body senses that there's your blood sugar level is too low, and then glucagon is secreted in order to uh, increase blood sugar in the blood uh, sugar in the blood to prevent you from passing out. So all these things are happening in your body at the same time to control to, or or to um to regulate what is happening 
in your body. When some people are having issues, it's because some of the, the maybe the, the gland isn't working properly or the, the, the receptors there that are supposed to receive the, the, um, the hormones or whatever messages being sent is not working properly. So they have to get medications or uh, different other um, sit or uh, whatever the doctor said they need to do to either increase their blood sugar level or decrease it depending on their situations. It is just that something is not working. But if everything is normal, this is what is going on in your body to regulate the blood sugar level so that your, your function at the normal level. Okay, so now you know the hormones that are secreted in the eyelids of longer hands, you know where it is located, and you know the functions of these hormones. Now, when we talk about the gastrointestinal tract, you guys mostly thinking about digestion, but hormones are also secreted in the gastrointestinal tract. So it is also uh, uh, referred to as an endocrine gland. So it, in the gastrointestinal tract, it secretes hormones, for example, gastrin, cholecystokinin, and these hormones are there. Just an example of the function is that it regulates the secretion of gastric juices. Because remember when we're talking about digestion and we say that once the, um, the food gets into the, the into the stomach, you have gastric juices that are secreted. Now, they are secreted based on the action of these hormones. It's like at the beginning of this topic, when we're talking, we said that the, this system, the endocrine system controls almost all activities in the body because all the activities in, that are occurring in your body is due to the stimulation of certain hormones. So this is an example of you figuring that it, even in the digestive system, there are hormones that are secreted to regulate the other actions that are happening. For example, remember this is an example, the regulation of gastric juices secretion. You have gastrin and cholecystokinin. These are two digestive hormones that are secreted that helps regulate the secretion of gastric juices. Now let's go to the adrenal glands. This is another endocrine gland, but it's divided into two glands. So the adrenal glands is divided into two. So let's talk about those. The adrenal glands are located close to the kidneys on the vertebral column. Remember when I, when we were doing the uh, reproductive system and we had that picture to show you where the testes were located and, as, and I showed you that in the back of the bird, the kidneys are kind of embedded in the vertebral column, in the really in the back of the bird. Sometimes it's, it's hard to see, to, uh, to remove when we're removing organs, when my students are doing their research, but it is there. So we said the adrenal glands are located close to the kidneys on the vertebral column, and there are two of them. And each, each is associated with a kidney. Each consists of two distinct parts. First, we're gonna talk about the adrenal cortex. This is one part of the adrenal gland. In the, in the adrenal cortex, it secretes the hormone aldosterone, which regulates electrolyte and water metabolism. The corticosterone, which regulates carbohydrate, fat, and protein metabolism. Another thing you need to know about corticosterone. Really? I'm, I'm so sick of that. Like, you ever seen a dude with cake? Okay. <clears throat> so aldosterone and corticosterone are secreted in the adrenal cortex. Aldosterone regulates electrolyte and water metabolism. 
Can somebody tell Alanis to, to mute herself? And corticosterone, which regulates carbohydrate, fat, and protein metabolism. The next part, remember we said it, it, had, it was two parts. The adrenal cortex was one part, and then the adrenal medulla is the next part. And the adrenal medulla secretes the catecholamines. Now, the catecholamines or the catecholamine hormones are like adrenaline or epinephrine, which regulates carbohydrate metabolism, blood pressure, metabolic rate, and sex gland activity. Another catecholamine hormone is noradrenaline. So it's adrenaline or noradrenaline or norepinephrine. And this regulates fat metabolism. So generally, the catecholamine hormones are referred to as the fear hormones. So when we were talking about the flight or fight response the other day, when we were talking about when we we're doing the nervous system, and we said and we were talking about the sympathetic and parasympathetic hormones, right? In the sympathetic nervous system is triggered say somebody's scary or you need to react some if people react differently there are times when you immediately get a lot more energy to fight somebody off than you would you would not normally have under normal conditions so these are the hormones that are actually triggered and when these hormones are triggered what they do is of the mobilization of carbohydrate, which is then used to supply extra energy when you're under stress or fear. So that is actually what is happening. Everybody understand that? About what happens, where you, you know the catecholamine hormone, hormones, adrenaline or noradrenaline, or if you say epinephrine or norepinephrine, you know what they do, and this the, the, it is giving an example of when they are triggered most. For example, if you're under stress or in fear, these hormones are then secreted, which then trigger the mobilization of carbohydrates, which is going to supply you with that extra energy for you to be able to fight off whoever is attacking you, or extra energy to run faster than you have ever run before. So these are the hormones that are involved. You said they're produced in the adrenal medulla? Yeah. Is that the inside of the adrenal gland? Yes, that's part, part of the adrenal gland. Because we said it had this kind of two of them associated with the kidney, the adrenal gland. So it is the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. Any questions about this? Okay, this you guys should remember because we talked about the reproductive system the other day. And we talked a lot about hormones. And we talked, we know what your reproductive uh, system does. However, it can also be referred to as an endocrine gland because hormones are secreted in, in the reproductive organs. Other than the other hormones, like for example, the gonadotropic hormones, which are coming from the, the, the anterior pituitary gland, the, the reproductive organs themselves can secrete hormone. And we did talk about that. So the reproductive organs also have endocrine functions. They respond to stimulation of the pituitary hormones to produce or release hormones. For example, the testes produces testosterone, which aids in the development of secondary sex characteristics, crowing, feather type, all of the other things that um, testosterone uh, 
triggers. So that is why the reproductive organs also have endocrine function because example, testes produces testosterone. That's an, exa that's an example. So that should be very clear. Now let's talk about the, in the female, the ovaries. Estrogen is produced in the ovaries. And this influences fat deposition, increase the release of calcium from medullary bones, as well as stimulates um, ovulation. So those, those, that's an example of how these endocrine glands, these um, reproductive gland organs also have endocrine functions because they secrete their hormones as well. So an example of a hormone, an, an example of um, ovaries, sorry, hormone secreted by the endocrine gland, which is one of them. Uh, the reproductive gland example, the ovaries, is that it secretes estrogen. And for the male, the testes produces testosterone. So this, this is where an example of our reproductive organs um, displays its endocrine functions. I think that is the last slide. Now the pineal gland, this is located above the midbrain. So how this works, how the pineal gland works as an endocrine gland, it uses, it uses tryptophan. Anybody knows what tryptophan is? If you have taken nutrition class, you, you would know what you should, you should know what this is. So the pineal gland using tryptophan, which is an amino acid, and it produces melatonin. And we know what melatonin does, it affects sleep behavior, and brain electrical activity. I know that you have heard people who, if they can't sleep, they take something um, that has melatonin in it to help them to sleep. So melatonin, with the help of this amino acid tryptophan, produces melatonin and melatonin affects sleep, behavior, and brain electrical activity. This is, is this straightforward enough? That's just what the pineal gland is. That's what, okay, that's what I'll give you here, the pineal gland, where it is located, what it does, <clears throat> what hormone it is produced there, and the, the function of that hormone. So we actually kind of finish up on time this morning. Any questions about the endocrine system and the different glands we talk about and the hormones they secrete and the functions of those hormones? All you do, make sure, you guys already have this PowerPoint, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just make sure that you guys are studying. And just before you go, one of the, I usually point out mistakes that students make on their test so they don't make the same mistake on the other test so that they, they don't lose points. Um, when I ask you guys, and I did say prior to this um, test, when I said, make sure you follow instructions, that's part of your whole learning, is to learn how to follow instructions and do things that, um, you are asked to do to make sure it's done properly. For example, I didn't take points off this time or give a zero, but when I say write true and false, what I mean the word true, the word false, and people put T and F. That is not following instructions. Most of it, and, and students actually did it on this test where they put, write the T and the F in such a way that I cannot tell whether it's a T or an F. 
because they purposely do that so that they think they'll get away with it. So if anyone put T and F in response to my true and false questions, you're going to get a zero. I won't even look if you had it correct. I just put a zero once I see T and F. So it, you have to follow instructions. So that's just one example, just to tell you. And also, do not write abbreviated words. You know how you're writing with and you put W on a slash or without and you put W slash O? No, none of that. You have to write out. All words must be written out. Because when you're doing, you're, you're, you're a scientist. When you're doing these things, you only write that when you're doing like social media or those your friendly stuff. You, you write like that. But when you're... You are being trained as a professional. You have to do it the correct way. You have to practice to do it the proper way. Because that that would not be accepted on a thesis or anything like that you're writing. So practice from now to do it the right way. All right. So I'll see you guys this afternoon on Zoom.